Hey everyone, what's crackalackin'? My name's Amel and you're watching Newsbreak. Well, the COP27 Climate Summit is officially over and there's been a big agreement to help developing countries deal with the effects of climate change. Here's Kale to explain more. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. This is the moment a big deal was set in stone. At the end of COP27 in Egypt, everyone agreed on a deal to set up a loss and damage fund for countries most affected by climate change. It is a huge achievement. This is a very positive result for 1.3 billion Africans. You see, because of the impact of climate change, developing countries have been seeking financial help for a long time to help pay for damages from things like drought or floods. It was a positive end to an interesting couple of weeks. See, since last year's summit in Glasgow, many countries have been struggling to stick to their promises, prompting a few stern words from leaders. We are on a highway to climate hell. Let's get real. It's only going to get worse. The climate crisis is tearing us apart, limb by limb. When it comes to the climate fund, well, there's still a lot of questions on where the money will come from and if it will be enough. But many say it's a small step in the right direction. Twitter has decided to let Donald Trump tweet again. Send. New Twitter boss Elon Musk posted this poll online, asking users if the former US president should be allowed to come back after he was banned from the platform back in 2021. More than 15 million people voted and almost 52% said yes, bring him back. But the man himself didn't seem as keen. Trump says he's going to stick to his own social media platform, Truth Social, and he didn't see any reason to rejoin Twitter. It's been a big weekend of World Cup action. I'm talking soccer, I'm talking rugby, and uh, well, it's actually just those two. Here's Josh. The 2022 Morgan Freeman has be I mean, FIFA World Cup has begun. With none other than Morgan Freeman appearing during the opening ceremony, as well as this guy drumming, Morgan Freeman, fireworks galore, and Morgan Freeman. In the actual soccer, things kicked off with host nation Qatar taking on Ecuador. Ecuador scored within the first three minutes until the ref decided it was actually offside. And the goal is allowed to great acclaim here. But Ecuador pushed through with captain Enna Valencia scoring two goals. Oh, what a fine header. It's Enna Valencia's show here. Making Qatar the first host nation in history to lose its opening game. Over in Rugby League and Australia are the undisputed world champs. Starting in the women's, the Jillaroos defeated New Zealand 54-4 to take home their third World Cup in a row. Meanwhile, in the men's, after a bit of intense stare down, the Kangaroos beat Samoa 30-10 in front of more than 67,000 fans. Tedesco, the captain's away! Aussie captain James Tedesco scored two tries as Australia took home their 12th Rugby League World Cup. Jeez, share it around, you guys. And for my next trick, I will make... Animals appear. This is Little Sihai, a panda from China who's appearing in Qatar for the first time. Her and her buddy Jingjing made their first public appearance and people were pretty excited. I like it because it was my dream and it came true. These two are there as part of the country's breeding program and they built their enclosure at exactly the right humidity and temperature levels to make them feel right at home. Melbourne Zoo has a new member whose name is uh, yet to be decided. That's because she was born just last week. It's all pretty exciting because Asian elephants are endangered and now the zoo says two more calves are expected in the next few months. Amazing. Now, some appearances are just extra special. This is chimpanzee mum Mahali in Kansas, US, who recently gave birth to this cute little guy, but he had some health issues, so she didn't get to see him for two days. And when she finally got to meet him, well, it's pretty cute. And now it's time for me to 